This honestly feels very strange to say, but I have been interviewing at a Fortune 100 company as a UX designer. It's crazy. Uh, there's a lot going on in my head, including inner musings of, I shouldn't be here, <laughs> I don't deserve this, and all the while I'm just trying to get through this process uh, with my head above water. If you followed any of my recent videos, then you know that I'm sending out 160 applications per month, which is what my UX bootcamp recommends in order to get a job. And so with sending that many applications, I have gotten piles and piles of rejections just floating around in my email. I don't really read any of them other than to see if it's a rejection email. But after seeing piles of them, it made me start to think, do I need to re uh, revise my portfolios? Do I need to make my case studies better? And so I've been weighing around doing that. Um, but then a couple weeks ago, I got an email in my, uh, throughout all of the piles of rejections, I found one email that said that I was selected to interview at, uh, at this company. And at first I thought it was bullshit, right? Cause I get a lot of emails from recruiters from these janky ass recruiting websites where when I look at the Google reviews for these companies, it's a flood of one star reviews saying on how they've scammed uh, potential UX designers and screwed them out of contracts. And I'm just like, well, I don't want any part of that. So I typically just don't even bother looking at those. But there was something that stood out to me from the email that I received saying that I was selected for an interview. The thing that stood out is that it's from a Fortune 100 company. And to say that I was shooketh is a complete understatement. Now, of course, when I received this email, the first thing I was doing was scouring the entire email, looking for all of the ways that this could potentially be a scam because there are a ton of recruitment scams out there. And so I scoured through, uh, but I found the one piece of evidence that clued me into the fact that it's real, and it's that the sender address was correlated to the actual website address. And so once I knew that, I was like, holy shit, this is real. And once I discovered that, it was like I entered this dream state that I honestly didn't even think I really belonged in. And I know I'm not, you know, I'm trying not to be delusional. It's not like this means I have the job. All it means is that I've been selected to interview. But still, the fact that I've been selected to interview at this company means that there is something that hiring managers are liking about either my portfolio or resume. For me, getting this interview is my first objective proof that I have what it takes to be a competent UX designer. And that's really something that I've been wrestling with for the past few weeks is I have a tremendous amount of imposter syndrome and feeling like I probably shouldn't be here. Uh, now the flip side to that is that I typically try to work my ass off to try to prove myself, but the irony is that no matter how much I try to work hard to prove myself, I will always feel like I'm never enough. And I, I get that that's sort of a doom and gloom mindset. Uh, I certainly try to be mindful of that, but it does often tend to work in my favor even, even with that being said. So to give an update, I have actually already done the first interview with the human resources manager. And I was so nervous leading up to that interview. So for to give uh, a little bit of backstory, to prepare for this interview, I did a lot of mock interviews with my UX bootcamp. One of the things they offer are specific career coaches that will do mock interviews. And so I went through a couple mock interviews just to sort of get warmed up to what kinds of interview questions might be asked during this interview. And I, I was nervous for those too, which was kind of interesting because those, it's not like there's any risk with a mock interview, but I found that those same palpable sensations such as I could feel my chest tightening, I could like palpably feel my heartbeat, everything just felt uh, tight and constricted. I had those exact same sensations for the real interview as I did the mock interview. So I found that to be kind of interesting. Even with all the anxiety, I will say that mock interviews are by far, to me, the best way to prepare for an interview. Because while I can type out answers to a bunch of commonly asked UX and, uh, design interview questions, it doesn't match the experience of the rapid fire 
question asking that an interview is because when I'm writing down answers to questions, I can think about it uh, before I type. But when someone asks me a question, I have probably five seconds before I have to start talking uh, before it just starts to get to be this awkward silence. And so with that being said, I have it, it trains me to get better at thinking on my feet. And that, to me, is the most valuable part of doing mock interviews. So when it came time to the actual HR interview, I will say it was not as bad as I was thinking. And really there was, so there was 30 minutes blocked off for this interview and the HR manager really only asked 10 minutes worth of questions. And so some of the questions that she asked were why I wanted to work at this company, uh, what was my experience like in my current UX role, and something about how do I build trust with the members of a design team as well as the overall product team when doing short sprints. That question was kind of an odd one, um, but I basically just answered uh, saying that frequent communication is the best way to tackle that sort of a subject. Obviously my answer was a little more in depth, but that's in a nutshell what I responded with. And then after the 10 minutes of questions, it was really her going over uh, what the role entailed, why they're looking for the role. And so in this, pos in, in this scenario, it's, uh, it's not someone leaving the position, but it's an entirely brand new role. She talked about the company's philosophy and um, yeah, it was actually smooth sailing after the questions part. And then she asked me if I had any questions for her. And so one of the questions that I really like asking, not just like I, this question, I actually just intrinsically like asking people, which is what's your favorite part about working at this company? Because I want to get a sense of, you know, why did you even choose this company and why do you like it? Um, I just think it's really neat to hear people's response to that. Uh, but other than that, I asked about salary expectations and then she flipped that question back on me saying, oh, well, what do you expect to earn? And, um, you know, I, I went high, I aimed high and, uh, she said that the salary that I gave was above the range that they were budgeting for the role. But you know what? It doesn't bother me because I'd rather aim high and settle for something lower than to aim low and get something that is below what they had budgeted. And so, uh, I mean, she didn't seem overtly uh, insulted by my salary range. She just said it was a little bit above what they had budgeted. At the end of the interview, she talked about what the next steps were. And because this company is trying to fulfill this role ASAP, there's actually only two more stages left to the hiring process. So the next stage of the interview is me meeting with two UX hiring managers. So technically there's actually two uh, UX roles being filled and uh, they're just working on two separate products uh, for the same company. And so I'll be meeting with both of them and uh, it's blocked for a 45 minute interview. Now, I don't know if this is just sort of a chat where I'm answering questions about things or if it's gonna be a portfolio walkthrough. I don't really know what it's gonna entail, but I've been doing mock interviews doing both. So I've been doing portfolio walkthroughs as well as just um, the typical interview question practice. And so I have that coming up this coming week. And then once I do that, if I get selected to move to the next stage and final stage, actually, I don't know who I'll be meeting with. I think it's maybe some sort of VP. Don't really know. But uh, supposedly there's just two more stages. And then if I'm selected, then the offer will be um, presented to me. I will say, I'm trying not to be falsely optimistic about this opportunity because I know that they're probably interviewing a lot of other candidates, but I will say that I'm just grateful to have been selected to even get this far because to me, that just shows that there is something about my experience that people are interested in. And just by having that, uh, just by having that validation, it makes me realize that, you know what? Maybe I am a competent UX designer and I'm a hireable UX designer. And just knowing that gives me that little piece of evidence that I find useful to try to uh, 
minimize the imposter syndrome that I have. And you know, even if I don't get selected for this role, yeah, I mean, it'll be disappointing, but I think that there's always something that I can take with me in terms of what do I what did I learn from this experience and how can I potentially better myself? And so if I don't get selected, I'll probably end up asking, you know, what was it that you felt like was lacking? Or I might even ask that in the interview if there's anything that they're apprehensive about me, uh, if there's anything they're apprehensive about me being a candidate for. And I think just knowing that will just help me to grow. But ultimately, uh, thinking positively, uh, if hopefully I can eventually put up a video saying that I accepted an offer for this company because it is a, a freaking awesome company and I would very much like to work from them. So hopefully I'll be able to share that with you, but either way, I'll be sure to update you as I go along uh, with my journey towards becoming a UX designer. Uh, if you have been getting value from these videos I've been putting up, I do have a quick favor. Would you be able to hit the subscribe button and bell notification? That would really help me out a lot. And um, yeah, I think that's all I have for today. So uh, I will be sure to keep you updated. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.